R and S are prefixes that we use to distinguish one enantiomer from each other. It is very much like the concept of cis versus trans for alkenes or for cyclic molecules. Cis and trans does not work with enantiomers because they do not have two sides that we can compare. Um, so instead, we use the letter R or the letter S to identify a particular enantiomer. The letters R and S are assigned not to the whole entire molecule, but rather to each chiral carbon in a molecule. If a molecule only has one chiral carbon, then it will only get one letter, either R or S. But if it has multiple chiral carbons, it will get a letter for every single chiral carbon. Maybe they'll all be R's, maybe they'll all be S's, maybe they'll be a little bit of each R and S, but every chiral carbon gets its own letter. These are the steps that we take to assign the letter R or S to a chiral carbon. And we're going to go through these three steps and then apply them to these two molecules over here and assign the prefix R or S to each of these molecules. The first step is definitely the hardest step in this process. The first step is to prioritize the substituents that are attached to the chiral carbon based on their atomic numbers. This is something that confuses a lot of students. When we do this prioritization, I spelled that wrong. When we do this prioritization, we are prioritizing based on the atoms that are attached directly to the chiral carbons. So we are prioritizing the four atoms that are attached to the chiral carbons. We are not prioritizing the entire substituent. We are only prioritizing the atom that is directly attached. So for example, if we have a methyl group that's attached to a chiral carbon, if we are looking at a methyl group that's attached, that is going to be prioritized as just a carbon atom because that is the atom that's directly attached. To the chiral carbon. So we are not prioritizing the entire substituent. The prioritization is based on atomic number. If you don't remember that from general chemistry, that is just simply the whole number on the periodic table. Um, and they are prioritized in order of increasing atomic number, which means hydrogen is the lowest priority. And then the prioritization increases as atomic number increases. So let's just start by applying this first step to this molecule right here. When we are doing the prioritization, again, we are focusing only on the atoms that are attached to the chiral carbon. So what I'm going to do to start off with is take this methyl group that we have, and I'm going to redraw it in like drawn out form. And what I'm actually going to do is kind of like darken these hydrogens because we want to try to ignore them. We want to focus just on the carbon atom because that is the atom that is directly attached to the chiral center. So what we're looking at for this prioritization is a hydrogen versus a carbon versus a fluorine versus a bromine. And again, we're doing this based off atomic number. So hydrogen is the lowest. And then as we go across the periodic table, the next thing that we come to is carbon. And then the next thing we come to is fluorine. And then the last one is bromine. So bromine is our highest priority. And I like to give high priority number one. And then fluorine was our next highest atomic number, and then carbon, and then hydrogen. Just like that. Let's do the same thing with this example down here. Um, again, with our methyl group, we want to focus just on the atom that's attached directly to the chiral carbon. So we're going to be looking at that as just a carbon, and it looks like we have the, I'm not very original, it looks like we have the exact same substituents again. 
So hydrogen, low priority, number four. And then the carbon is number three. Bromine is number one. Fluorine is number two. And again, this is just based off of their atomic numbers. Okay, so now step two, we need to view the molecule with the lowest priority substituent in the back. In the back means that the lowest priority substituent, so that's going to be number four based on the way that I like to number them. In the back means that it is on the dashed bond. It has to be on the dashed bond bond. Viewing the molecule from this perspective, sometimes it's just going to come like that. Um, like this example right here, our lowest priority substituent is already in the back on the, on the dash, so that's perfect. Um, but it's not always going to be that easy, so this might mean that you need to redraw it. And I'll show you how to do that. Or maybe it just means that you build a model and then you just physically turn your model around in your hand so that you're looking at it with the low priority pointing away from you uh, as if it were on a dashed bond. So let's take a look at our examples. Again, we've already talked about how for this one, the low priority substituent is in the back and that's perfect. It is exactly the way we want it to be. If the low priority substituent is not in the back, which is what we have going on right here, we want our number four to be on the dash and it's on the wedge instead, um, we do need to redraw it. Now to redraw it, and this can be a little bit tricky, to redraw it, what we're going to do is choose either one of our straight line bonds. And I like to choose this one over here just simply because it's easier for me. Choose one of these bonds to hold still. So we're just going to temporarily ignore it. We're gonna pretend like it's not there. And the other three bonds, we are going to trade places with them. We're gonna move them all in the same direction. I want to have my hydrogen on the dash, which means I want to move the hydrogen to here and then I'm going to continue that pattern. I want to move the fluorine over to here and continue that pattern. I want to move the carbon down to here. So basically, this is kind of like I'm twirling the molecule. I'm just rotating these, partic these three particular substituents. So I'm going to do that redraw right now. Remember, I'm going to keep the bromine in place. I'm not going to move it. I'm going to set my bonds up for the other three things. And I'm going to take my hydrogen and move it into this position because that's where I want it to be right there. And I'm going to take the fluorine and I'm going to continue with the pattern. We're not trading places because that that's that is not allowed. So I took the hydrogen and I moved it up to here. I'm going to take the fluorine and I'm going to continue the pattern. So the fluorine is going to end up here. And then I'm going to take the methyl and I'm going to move it down to here. C H3. And I'm going to copy the number prioritization that we've already come up with. So now I've redrawn the molecule. In the next video, I'm going to show you another trick for um, getting around step two. If this is pretty confusing for you, I'll give you another option of how to do that. Um, okay, so we've done step one, we've done step two, now we're ready for step three. For step three, we're going to focus on um, the substituents one through three, we're going to ignore number four, and we're going to determine if one, two, three is in a clockwise or counterclockwise pattern. So what I'm going to do is we'll start with this guy right here. And to do this, we focus only on one through three. So what I'm actually gonna do is erase substituent number four, like it's not even there. So it won't be distracting to us. And now what we're doing is looking at the order from one to two to three. And we're asking ourselves, is that a clockwise or counterclockwise direction? This is counterclockwise and the counterclockwise direction. When one through three is counterclockwise, that is an S. Now that was something that was really tricky for me as a student, trying to remember if clockwise versus counterclockwise was R or S. And what I learned was that if you go from one to two to three, it is like the shape of drawing an S. So that's how I, that's how I still remember one to two to three is an S. So this particular carbon is an S 
carbon, and the molecule has the S stereochemistry. Let's focus on our second example. So again, what I'm going to do is erase number four so that we can ignore it, not pay attention to it. And we're going to look at the uh, direction of one to two to three. One to two to three. Now we are moving in a clockwise direction. And the clockwise arrangement is called R. And the way that I remember that is really similar to the way that I remember S because 1 to 2 to 3 is the same shape that we take when we draw a capital letter R. So this is the R, sub uh, R molecule, has the R stereochemistry. And the same with this guy over here because remember um, this is just a redraw of this particular molecule right here. Now in the next video, these examples were pretty simple. So in the next video, we're going to look at some trickier examples of this.